When it comes to selecting processes for mastering, I'm always conscious of the four pillars of audio fidelity, distortion, frequency balance, noise, and phase. So any plugin I choose to use, any processor I choose to use, I'm always conscious about how I'm affecting any of those four pillars, how I'm introducing, manipulating, or affecting them. Now, when I put out a video recently on using a low shelf instead of a high pass filter to avoid excessive phase rotation on low frequencies, I was met with mixed feedback. That feedback has prompted me to make this video because I couldn't provide a solid response. And if I can't provide a solid response, guess what that means? That means there's more for me to learn. So me making this video is me answering for myself. For you, the wonderful subscribers, does phase rotation matter in mastering? So I put in the time, I put in the research, and this is what I've come up with. First, let's establish some definitions. When talking about phase rotation from a particular processor, I think it's better for the sake of clarity for me to use the word polarity rotation, as phase or phase shift is a time-based function affecting the interaction of two summing signals, whereas a rotation or rotation in polarity is a function of shifting frequencies in an audio signal within a range of 180 degrees of equal value respective to one another. For the sake of this discussion with those definitions established, we are discussing polarity rotation. You know, the little symbol on some of your processes, the one that rotates the phase of a signal 180 degrees. Filters which rotate polarity are the backbone for making up EQs. See, an equalizer is not a function of gain, but rather phase. We see a GUI, a graphical user interface, and we go, boost two decibels at 100 hertz. The computer isn't doing an if or search function to find 100 hertz, and then it's got a little fader for 100 hertz and it brings up a decibel or two to boost that frequency. The filter behind that signal is in fact a parallel path, which has a filter that rotates the polarity of those frequencies by the relative amount of degrees required in order to make that gain boost or gain attenuation. Take for example, a high pass filter. A first order high pass filter uses a 90 degree rotation on a parallel signal for the frequencies below the cutoff. The sum of those signals interact destructively, creating the resulting filter output, which rolls off the low end. Now, why would this be a problem? How could it be a problem? Is it a problem? For the most part, guess what? It's not a problem. This is a great, powerful, and simple solution to what could be a complicated filter or effect to actually construct. But why am I harping on about phase or polarity rotation and minimizing it in mastering? See, when you set off a mix for mastering, the mixed signal is a sum of component frequencies which interfere with one another constructively and destructively to make up a resulting waveform. And that also affects the tone of the material and the peak values of the final mix. So take, for example, this waveform here. It is the sum of a 100 hertz sine wave, 200 hertz sine wave, 300 hertz sine wave, all starting at a zero degree instance. Now, what I did to show the effects of how phase rotation from EQ filters affect waveforms is I've placed an all pass filter at 100 hertz across the output of this waveform from the sum of 100, 200, and 300 hertz sine waves. An all pass filter passes all frequencies at unity gain, which means none of these three frequencies will be boosted or attenuated. However, it will invert the polarity at the center frequency of the filter. So what I've done is in Reaper, I've added this phase rotation here at 100 hertz. I've used a narrow bandwidth as it not to affect the polarity of the 200 and 300 hertz. So it's nice and narrow there. I've exported it and let's have a look here. Here we can see the relative waveform of the 100 hertz waveform inverted against the two and 300 hertz waveform at a zero degree instance. Now, all frequencies are still the exact same gain. However, the sum of the component frequencies are now interacting differently. So this waveform, which was once this, with all those same frequencies at the same levels, is actually now this. Okay, the 100 hertz waveform is now interfering in a destructive manner, reducing the output of the waveform. Now, if this were the opposite, where we began with the sum of 100, 200, and 300 hertz, and the 100 hertz sinusoidal waveform was at a 180 degree instance, then instead of adding that filter, which would become destructive interference of the gain on the waveform, we get a constructive interference of the gain on the waveform, and the output is in fact an increase in volume. This is the reason why sometimes when we do a cut with an EQ or implement a high pass filter, we may create constructive interference of the component frequencies in the waveform. And guess what? 
the peak value actually increases. Now, this doesn't mean any rotation of polarity must be avoided. That's silly and impractical, and there's a reason why these filter designs exist and have incredible practical uses in the world of audio. However, being conscious of how they interfere with waveforms is an important consideration when interacting with our tools, and hence why I suggest for most situations, it's more appropriate to use a low shelf filter instead of a high pass filter for managing low ends, especially if you're just doing a small minute chain. That said, there are still use cases for high pass filters in extreme instances of huge amounts of rumble or mixes which can't be revisited before mastering. However, for the most part, to blanketly put a high pass filter on every master you do is a surefire way to do more harm to your master than good in majority of situations. Now, if you're interested in seeing the video that sparked all of this, click right here. That, that's the video that started, it was three EQ tips, which I still think apply even after all this research I did, but this just clarified a lot about phase rotation and its impact on a waveform and the way a waveform is constructed. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and until next time, take care.